Hallelujah. Yes, my God. Anointed to preach the gospel, my God. Please, in the name of Jesus. Go through by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God. Okay. Hearts and souls today, my God. In the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah, bro. Preach boldly. The gospel is that Jesus came. Amen. He was crucified. Amen. Buried and rose on the third day. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Mm. And interestingly, in um, Romans, um, um, in order to be born again, it's simple steps, you see. See, what's happened is people have made the gospel very complicated. Now, often we say that it's correct to say that God, of course, in his essence, is complicated if you want, and his ways, as the scripture said, are past finding out. But God, in his mercy, has made himself very simple. Yes? And he says that the word is in your mouth. Hallelujah. So all you have to do is open your See, that's where the power is. Paul said the power is in the gospel. When Paul was talking about not being ashamed of the gospel, he said the power is in the gospel. So that means when I open my mouth, that's the power. No power within myself. But just to say that Jesus is Lord, Jesus rose from the dead, that's where the power is. And it's upon that belief, Paul said that the word is in your is near. The word is near in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith. And the word of faith and the gospel and the truth come by preaching. So Paul said, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. And the gospel is that Jesus came and died. And upon that, you can say, Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth. That's a salvation that Jesus is Lord. No words, no nothing else. You see, when we look at the theology of Paul, it makes sense actually what Paul is saying. If it's about what I have to do to please God, first of all, that's impossible. Let's be very real. Most of us can't please our friends. We can't please our husbands and our wives. So it wouldn't make sense that there's something that we can do to um, please the Creator. No, it has to come from God. God has made Himself known to us. And what I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, it's not complicated. The gospel is simple. If you say, Jesus, I repent of my sins, I ask you to come into my life. No magic. It's no magic here. It's not about magic. It's based on God's word. And it's also not based on your feelings. Because today you feel like crap, and tomorrow you feel like the best thing in the world, and then you go back to feeling like crap again. So you see, the essence of the gospel is based on what God has said. God said that you are good enough in all your sins, God has forgive you of your sins, and that's the gospel. What we're getting is, Paddy quietly said, in this day and age, very crazy, lots of ideas about um, end times. And some bits are true, and some bits are false. But the thing is, that's not really where we should concentrate. Where we should really concentrate on is preaching the gospel and doing those things on a daily basis that bring us closer to God. And God will take care of the rest. See, if we look at Revelation, you can get complicated. It can, it can get complicated at times. You don't know whether you're going or coming. You don't know what bits are in, in accordance with Scripture and what bits are not. But you know where your safety is in Christ. Your safety is in Christ. So when we want to get scary, as people often do, and we want to talk about the Antichrist, that's not really where we should be. I am safe in Christ. If you talk about the resurrection, or rather, sorry, if you talk about the rapture and when Christ is going to come and who's going to be left and who's going to go, what I need to do is have faith in Christ and know that I am safe in Christ. However it plays out, if we're talking about tribulation, or if we're talking about three and a half years, there's going to be suffering on the earth, that shouldn't be our concern as believers. And nor should it be concern of preaching the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus is Lord. He made it very complicated, you see, but God hasn't, because God in his wisdom has made it where you are. Even you, young man, very young, very young man like yourself. The gospel is clear for everyone. Don't need any degrees, don't need to go to Oxford. Jesus said he loves you. On faith of that, things can change. That's how it happens. It's only promises today. Force gospels, force ministers, force politicians, broken promises intentionally or unintentionally. The only thing we have left is faith in Christ. Nothing else. So, the gospel is that Jesus came and he died. You can receive that right now. Right here, right now. Don't need to go to a church. Don't need to go up to an altar. Don't need to get religious. Don't need to fall on your knees. What needs to bow is your heart. Yours and yours and mine. That's what needs to bow. What you do with your physical body, how you position it, fine, is up to you. But what needs to bow is the heart. Humble before God. And that's what the gospel is. You can leave here today a new man, a changed man, and myself. You want me to change and grow. You see, the thing is, well, see, it doesn't stop there. You know, sometimes, you know, Christians as well have had these three stages of um, confession, or rather, yeah, um, um, confession, repentance, and then born again. That's the first stage. 
and then we continue to grow as Paul says and the, Paul, when actually Paul would talk about growing in the spirit he actually used a present, what they call present continuous so we continue to grow in the spirit we don't get saved and born again and get come to the water we continue to grow we continue to grow that's right yes you have to continue to grow and how do you continue to grow by the reading of the word studying with fellow kids see this is what church is church is right here church is not under a building with four quarters church is here um, God said we're two and three are gathered church is here right now it is three of us that's church the church is a people the church is a flesh and blood member see so when we're talking about salvation what I'm trying to say this is the point the community yes that's right it means the community yes it means community no at all absolutely absolutely it's not a building at all it's a flesh and blood member it's like a yes assembly that's right yes assembly that's what's in the Athens yes assembly absolutely yeah that's yeah that's the church absolutely assembly of people absolutely yes. so when you begin to understand you see changing things you see because sometimes people see that's this, why i'm saying this is because sometimes people think they need to be in a certain place they don't understand that you know what god wants around your life can be done right here. it's just an assembly of people that's right people. yes yes you don't have to make your prayer across the road to the church you see things go in places what i'm saying confession in christ you mean you confess, you confess your sins, repent of your sins, and then of course there's other things that go into confession. I'm not saying it's not important, that's fellow things. I mean, so things are in order. So it's not that you become say them born again, it's not going to do my own thing. Because sometimes you see there's got to be a balance. Because it's, while it's important to say that um, the church and the people are not the um, building, but at the same time you've got to get a balance. Because some people get the idea rightly or wrongly that there's some kind of full spirit, that I've confessed Christ and now I can go and do my own thing. But this is Necessarily. And remember, and remember when we talk about church and we talk about fellowship as well, it's an obedience to Christ. It's an obedience to God, not man. Not you being obedient to me or me being obedient to you. So let's talk about the church right now and the gathering a bit now, which of course are the flesh and blood members. Now it's right to say that the building is the building of the church or the church building. There's nothing wrong with saying that, but to equate it with being a flesh and blood members is where we can get confused. And why am I saying all this? I'm saying all this because I'm saying that God has an order. You know, God has an order. Order. and that's confession repent of your sins but acknowledgement comes first you see so let's look at a couple of stages because it's important it's acknowledgement you mean if you think that you haven't sinned or you have the idea that you have sinned or that there is no god and that you have nothing to, to, to turn back from because that's what repentance is it's quite an actual big step you have to be humble before god and said i haven't got it all right i haven't got all the answers i need some help and in this day and age that's a very hard thing to do so what i'm saying is there have to be stages so you um, um acknowledge your sins acknowledge them if you want let's go for a couple of stages confess them repent that needs to turn around but it starts with acknowledgement ah i've sinned before holy god yeah i'm going to do something about that what i'm going to do i'm going to say i'm going to acknowledge that that's confession lord i've sinned before you in whatever words you know and then when you sort of acknowledgement ah you know and then confession lord i've done wrong i need you and then repent lord i repent i'm going to turn around you know repentance is turn around and then that's it right there it's not magic you mean God hears that, he knows that, he honors it. You become born again. It's not magic. That's what born again is. See, but where it starts is not for me to tell you. You've got to know that you meant what you said to God. I've got to know that I meant what I said to God. He's got to know that he meant what he said to God. That's it. Doesn't need, you see what I'm getting at? It doesn't need a building. You don't have to be on a particular roof. You see, but now when you've done those three stages, if you want, I'm not saying three stages, they just simply are. If you count them, acknowledgement, confession, repentance. And then you're born again. That's what born again means. And then the Holy Spirit will come and dwell with you. And then now you're going to find yourself in a fellowship. Just like a political party does, you know. Those who call themselves Labour, they gather together at certain times. You know, you don't get Labour gathering with Conservatives. Not when it comes to issues to do with them, you know, Conservatives. And nor do you get the vice right versa. You don't get conservatives gathering with Labour when it's to do with their official, you know, there's certain times where they say, yes, as all politicians, we're going to go into the House of Minister, the House of West Minister. But yeah, even then. Yes. They have the same, yes. the same view about, that's right, the, same, that's right. about the things, same about the morals, about the Jesus. Jesus. Absolutely. About, Absolutely. The, about Absolutely. the divine things, that's about right. God. That's right. Help yeah, me. About that's the right. scripture, Absolutely. right? Yes. Like we don't believe in Quran or something like that. We don't believe in. 
other scriptures, we believe only in the one particular yes, scripture. Right. So we okay. are Christians. Absolutely. We, are, we believe Absolutely. in the Bible. So you gather get with all this, yeah. you have something in common with you. Yeah, yes. Of course, yeah. What yeah. can we talk with the Muslims if they That's right. believe in the Quran and we believe in a different yes. authority? They have That's their right. authority, we have our right. authority. Right. So, so, yeah. so can we come into agreement? Not on, not on doctrine. Hardly. No, only not when on doctrine. the authorities no. overlap. But, yes. but yeah, that's like a coincidence. The authorities overlap sometimes, but we have only one authority and they disagree about that's many right. things. Christianity that's, that's, and Islam. That's, that's, and that's, that's, Islam tries to say that or oh, there's actually the same authority. No, it's, yeah. no, it's not the same authority. It's not the same at all. Your Jesus is not actual no, Jesus. It's not the same at all. Yeah. Some made up Jesus yeah. six hundred years Absolutely. later. It's a very big lie actually to yeah. say it is the same. It's quite yeah, simply put, you yeah, can say is. if it is the same, why isn't the God saying the same thing? Yeah. If the God of the Quran is the same as the God of the Bible, it's a simple authority. question. Why aren't they saying the same thing? That's right, it's absolutely. Not They're not saying the same thing. Right. That's right. Absolutely. We have different authorities. Yes. So how can we come into conclusion no. if they call their authority and we call That's our right. authority? That's a yeah. good question. You can't. But you yeah, see, like, as well, you see, we're kind of in society, or society kind of trying to gear you toward that, ain't it? It's what I personally call um, um, religious multiculturalism, where they're trying to get you to jail. In a yeah, that's like, for example, the right. conservatives, yes. they, they like the Margaret Thatcher, but, uh, yeah. but the Marxists, they would like the Karl Marx. So. Yes. Marxists wouldn't go for authority no. to <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. Would they? Would they? No. Would they? no. And the conservatives wouldn't go to the for the some authoritative statement to to the Karl Marx. That's right. no, yeah, that's that's, that's two, two different authorities. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. That's, right. that's right. Two different authorities. Yeah, so we can't mix it. Right? Like that, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Two different voices. Yeah, yeah. the same with Jesus. Yes. Muhammad. Muhammad was a completely different person Absolutely. from Jesus. Completely. So just let me get onto my next point, and then you know, because what I would try to say in, in wrapping all that up. That's right. No, no, you're fine. You're helping me, that's cool. I'm not stopping you. I'm just, I'm just gonna wrap up this point. I'm not stopping you, carry on. I'm just gonna wrap up this point. Um, because what, what I was trying to say is um, the stages, if you want. And what I'm trying to say is the cognitive, see, in everything that I talked about, that is you becoming the church without a building. So that's why I'm talking about those stages. That's somebody becoming the church, as in flesh and blood members. And then now, those flesh and blood members, when we all do what I said needs to be done repentance, confession, and acknowledgement, that is the church. Let's say, for example, all three of us do that. We are now the church. And then we're going to meet regularly. And when we meet regularly, we're going to take our flesh and blood bodies, which is the church, and go to a church and go to, into a building. That's now the church. The church is building. You, him, and me are the church. And we've now gone under a roof that the church is building to be sure we are the church flesh and blood it's what I'm, what I'm trying to get it's right to say that the building is a church of a sense you just got to get it right though it is the church is building once we're in there but only when we're in there it's a church, you know when we've left the church has left and that's the building you know, yes, it's right. when we're in there that's the building you have, I mean? to, you have to be a body in Christ absolutely. in Christ not the building yes in Christ. absolutely yeah. so what I'm saying is you Knowledge, can take yeah. that anywhere and, try, uh, and this is my key point what I'm saying is um, um, that's where fellowship comes in so fellowship comes in because you've done those three stages. Acknowledgement, confession, repentance, that becomes the church. And we fellowship together and continue to grow. It's a growing stage because it's so easy to do that stage. Unfortunately, a lot of people do. You know, to some extent, whether fully or not, they go through those stages. But then it's so easy to fade away. That's why the growing is coming. So attack yourself with other people who have something in common with you. And you help them grow and they help you grow. That's what church is. That's fellowship. It doesn't stop at being born again and speaking in tongues or whatever it is. You, do, you can so easily go cold, you know, and even we in Hebrew. Have, well, no, that's right. We are not having the same sort of gifts yeah. from God. Everybody is no, different. So, gifts, so when we are together, then yeah. we are growing strong that's because right. then the the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit gives different gifts to, to, to different people. Absolutely. And then uh, somebody maybe can heal, which is very rare. Yes. Very rare. Yeah, but Other does. people, they are, they have wisdom. They, they can memorize the scripture very well. Absolutely. Other people, they are, have, they are able to do a saintly life. They are Absolutely. helping. They you are people so, that can pray all night. You yeah, that, pray. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Some, right. Somebody who is so able to help people. Yeah. And then when we are together, then... All the gifts are shared. Yeah, then, 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 yeah. We actually, then we are actually helping each other yeah, to understand, you know, the God, yeah, but and God, God, Jesus, and yeah, our growth in the right. faith. Absolutely. And that's the church, and that's fellowship. And you see, and then that's continual. That's why Paul said, uh, continue to grow in the Spirit. And when you that continue to grow, continue. So it's not, a, it's not a kind of, you get to a stage and then you stop. You continue to grow. And you and do that. Assembly of, yes. of the fellow Christians, yes. fellow believers in Jesus. Yes. 
You do that through prayer, worship, singing, blah, blah, blah. That's right. And then you grow. And you see and you feel the changes as well. First and foremost, based on God's word. But you see some stuff, like for example, you might find out what your gifts are. We can talk about practical stuff as well. You might have the gift of um, encouragement. You might encourage someone. That's a gift. Remember, remember these two stages in um, the Bible. Quite big, actually, where Paul fleshes out very well individual gifts. One's in Romans, um, sorry, 1 Corinthians 15. It gives a long list of gifts. That one has one gift, another one has one gift, another one, you know, and then and, and then he compares that with the church. One does this, one does that, one does the other, and, and he compares it to a body. Remember, he compares the church, Christ's bride, with a human body. He says, one bit to left arm, one bit to right arm, leg, eye, ear. Remember, and he says, what will the ear do without the eye? What will the eye do without the ear, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, so there are two big bits in 1 Corinthians 15, which tells you clear as day what the church and how it functions together with each individual member and each individual member is, and then there's Romans 12 as well where Paul talks about encouraging people to wait on their gifts if your gift is serving if your gift is ministering you know in the areas of business don't be lazy you know so there's different areas of gifts and that's what the church is flesh and blood members and each one teaches them yeah, none of us is perfect only only Jesus is the perfect man yeah. Or because he is God, yes. he is the only one who is he is perfect, yes. and that's and then when he is with us, if we do not have him uh, in the assembly or in the church, right? Because we believe he is still with us, actually, like he's still living. He went yes. up with yes. his body. And also, the saints, people who uh, who don't go to hell, yes. yeah, people who are in heaven with God, they are they are actually going to be resurrected, but they are living yes. people, yes. and so. Uh, yeah, Jesus is the perfect man, and uh, although we are trying to be perfect, none of us is perfect. No, That's why we need so. to come we can, together. No, we're not. We because, continue to grow, yeah. and we won't be on, yeah. in this plane. We won't be. What we can do is continue to grow. Yeah. Continue to continue to grow. You know, you know, and until such a time. That's what Scripture says. You continue to grow through, you know, as I said, certain means: studying of God's word, prayer, praise, worship, etc., fellowship with each other, breaking of bread. Communion in two senses, as in the Lord's Supper, but also as in communion, you know, and you continue to grow. But no, in terms of perfection, no, um, um, on this plane, no, but we continue to grow. Yeah. And also maybe uh, doing the, I mean, uh, conducting a godly life, doing the good deeds. Yes. But not as a result of, I mean, as a result of faith, not because... Not, not to be saved. Yeah, not to because be saved. Because you're saved. But because I'm yes. saved. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there is a lot of contention between the, yes, yeah, some is. Protestant churches no, no, and no, especially no. between the traditional yes. uh, Orthodox Catholic churches and yes. uh, Protestant churches. Yeah, sure. Especially the Reformed theology. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah, there is. Yes, there is. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I was actually referring that one to. Is very difficult. And I was saying it actually makes sense when you think about what Paul says. No, because they get to a um, point where <coughs> um, individuals have to please God, then what Paul was saying is, well, this one's going to boast and say, well, I've done this to please God, and another one's going to boast and say, I've done it. gets very complicated. If you think that there's something I have to, if anyone, if an individual thinks that there's something they have to do to please God, it's going to get very complicated quickly. Right? You can see that, can't you? Because you're going to say, well, I'll do this to please God. I'm going to say, well, I'm doing this to be God. And then I'll say, ah, but look what I did. Yeah, look at you. You know, it's like, remember that example where the, the guy, the, the, um, the parable that Jesus gave in Luke, where the guy said, I'm so glad that I'm not like this sinner. Remember? Yes. He's getting very arrogant because I pray X amount of times a day. Yeah, yeah. And the other guy, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that was arrogance. Jesus used in that example. And then the other guy, who was more humble, didn't even then look up when he was praying and say, Lord, remember me a sinner, basically. And, 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 and Jesus commended one and, and um, criticized the other one, basically. I mean, to think that you've got it sorted. You've decided that this is what I'm going to do and you're saying that it's going to please God. That's what, any, you know, an individual, I mean. You get to that point, you're determining that I'm going to do this and it's going to be so good that God's going to be pleased. It doesn't even work that way. I mean, let's look, let's look at it in practical terms. Sometimes we struggle to please our friends and our husbands and wives and brothers and sisters. So how many times have you done something that you think somebody would like but they don't? Or you've done what you consider to be a good effort, and it may be to you, and not to say that it isn't, but to the person you, you, you were expecting to acknowledge it as you saw it, they didn't. You know, you might break your back and go and get some presents for your wife or girlfriend or whatever, and they say, oh, okay, is that it? Thanks. You know, and you thought, you know, you, you know, you, you're expecting some kind of, a, you know, because you, you tracked across the other side of London and came back at midnight. You think they're going to say, oh, you know, and appreciate it as you saw it, but no. So what I'm saying is, if you look at it on the human terms, 
how we struggle to please people or think we have and to find out to our whole that we have then how much more God you see that's why that's where grace comes in that's why Paul said if it's if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's of it's, it, it, it's of grace you are saved through faith and not of yourself it is a gift of God because no one can please God God, 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 they, they, so because so, so God didn't require that. He doesn't require that. He doesn't require that. He, he requires a perfect justice because he's yes. a God, right? Yeah. You, right? He has to be perfectly just. Yes. And if some somebody does something wrong, he needs to pay the full price for it. Absolutely. But are we able to do it? We are not no, able to do it. Right. Only it Jesus that. can do it because he's the perfect man. Yes, that's right. He, God became became a man, yeah. and that's how he needed to pay the price for yes. all the humanity because yes. none of us is able to pay no. uh, the price for any smallest sin, actually, right? I mean, the, for the first sin, that, 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 and that's where the cancer comes from of of all the of all the of all the wickedness in the world, and not just the wickedness, but even any sort of small imperfections of, of you know. Imperfections for us of our bodies, or, or, yeah, it, it actually comes from Adam and Eve, and somebody needs to pay for the price for it, right. and we are not able to pay for that's the price right. for it. In the old but the good it was the lamb, and the, 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 yeah. that's right. In the old yeah. it was the sacrifice. No that's right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. It became no many, an. That's right. How many yes. sacrifices we would do? We would never that's be right. able Maybe to. it became an annual thing. It was yes. every year thing. Yes. So it, can you imagine how laborious that was? Yes. You know, 365 days later, as we understand, oh, gotta do it again. 365 days later, gotta do it again. Friend, gotta do it again. That's right. And it was like a right. one tenth of your annual produce, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, if you, if you, so for example, in a year when uh, when 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 you are not when it's not bountiful, then maybe the other year you're gonna be starving, right? That's right. So it requires a load of faith. That's right. To to that's, actually do that's it. That's right. Each season produces all yeah. right. That's right. Good enough, right? <laughs> right. Still the people right. Singing, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah. And then you see the complicated thing. Sorry, another complicated thing as well is that they had to find a perfect, so-called perfect. You know, that's why the symbolism is that Christ is the perfect lamb. So physically, you know, four-footed beast, they had to find one without a blemish. Remember, it wasn't just right. let's say a sheep no, yeah. or a goat yeah. or a lamb. No, it wasn't just the first one you have to grab. You have to look at it in the you know, It's not injured. It's not scarred. Do you know what I mean? That's why. It's that's right. Well, no. uh, I used to when, think, when, I when, when I was a kid, he stole me biscuits. Biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm going to read I'm going to say, come up here. Come and speak. I just want to know come come where, where, where the rock is. Say the same thing you're saying. Yeah. 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 I never. Hold on. 